Welcome into Date Palm Field. MLB the show as interleague action for you this afternoon. It's the Seattle Mariners and the San Diego Padres. First pitch coming at you right after the break. Just about set to go now. And on the mound for San Diego in this one, Joe Musgrove. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, this guy lives and dies with his slider, and it's a good one. Most guys, you know, they're working off of their fastball, but he's backwards a little bit, works off the slider, and then when the fastball comes, it can add a little velocity in terms of perception when guys are used to seeing that off-speed pitch. When it's right, really tough to hit. Even if you guess it's coming because it's breaking two planes, horizontal and vertical. And he deals. A swing and a soft liner. Oh, he gloves it. Now Scott Service lined up for the Seattle Mariners. And with their ace on the mound today, they're just looking to provide him a little bit of run support, and they'll see what they can do for him. Boog, you have to be really careful when you've got a guy like this on the mound for you to not become a spectator. You know that he doesn't give up a whole lot, but sometimes guys get a little too comfortable and don't have an urgency to score runs. You have to make sure you put him in a situation where he can get the W, but also you guys can cruise to the finish line and not have to worry about a comeback in the end. One down, base is empty. Ground ball to the right side. And it finds its way through for a hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Just one of those seeing eye base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. And now a chance to maybe get creative on offense with good speed on first. And now it's Julio Rodriguez. Runner on the goal. Cut on and miss. Throw to second. Great jump. And that is a stolen base. It wasn't even close. Cal Raleigh. Cal Raleigh up next for the Mariners. Hot shot to first base, and he snags it to end the inning. One left for Seattle. Half inning complete. We've got no score. Welcome back. And on the mound today, Luis Castillo. How about a scouting report on him? Well, I'm interested to see how he utilizes his sinker to this lineup, Boog. You know, it's not necessarily his go-to primary pitch, but he does mix it in when he needs it. He's just got to make sure that it's not flat. Otherwise, it's going to get hit hard. So look for him to throw it up there when he needs a big double play, a ground ball, something like that to get out of an inning, change it up for a hitter. Also, get those hitters looking down so that it opens up the top of the strike zone, especially late in an at-bat. Next offering finds the zone, and the count is full. Luis Castillo, a guy who debuted in 2017 with the Reds at 24 years old, multiple All-Star appearances, traded to the Mariners at the deadline in 2022. You think about that triple-digit fastball, but the changeup is the thing that stands out. Yeah, and you could argue that he's got the best changeup in baseball. From the right side, it's like a Bugs Bunny pitch and works so well off of his fastball. That one back up the middle, and it gets through. Just kept it simple, played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there's just no one there to knock it down. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Here's Manny Machado now. The pitch. Swung on, popped up on the infield. France sizes this one up and puts the squeeze on that. And there are two outs. As we take a look at the Padres lineup, a tough challenge in this one, an excellent arm on the mound. Singy, they're going to have to capitalize on their opportunities. Yeah, and they're not going to get a whole lot if he pitches the way that he's capable of pitching. So, you know, be ready to swing from the first pitch. You get something straight, man, you better turn on it. Now it's Fernando Tatis Jr. Ball. And now two balls and a strike. Two balls, one strike.
Tatis waits. And it's fouled away. Kim off of first with two away. The kick and the pitch. Runner goes. Foul ball. Another 2-2 two -two upcoming. That one is absolutely belted. That's back. And forget it. He powers one out to right field, and they throw a pair on the board. It's 2-0. That's the exact definition of hitting the ball where it's pitched, taking that outside fastball and driving it the opposite way out of the ballpark. You want to bottle that type of approach. Now here's Xander Bogarts now. Next pitch is inside, and it's 2-1. and one. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout, and hit the reset button. Next pitch is outside. Bogarts, who wears that number two on his back for his idol, Derek Jeter. That pitch gets the corner, and it's 3-2. and two. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. Rojas makes the play, and it's out number three. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. And welcome back. Top of the second. Now it's the shortstop, J.P. Crawford. J.P. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. Well, Boog, I know how much you love free stuff, and this offense has to love a free base runner to start this inning, even if it hurts a little bit. We'll see if they can do anything with it. The 1-1 is fouled off. One and two here. Oh, he's really working him away, this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. The 2-2 two -two now. Three -two. He wanted that fastball high and tight, looking for a strikeout. Just didn't locate it very well. Nobody out. Runner at first. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Couldn't catch up to the heater. The batter now, Jorge Polanco. Right-hander kicks, deals. Polanco checks his swing, appeal to third. Nope, he held back. Here's a 2-2. That one missed. Dave Lawrence assigned to work home plate in this one. Good umpire, Boog. Very fair, very consistent. Now, I did hear some feedback that he opens up the outside corner a little bit on left-handed hitters, which you know for me, I'd be kind of salty. So maybe something to keep an eye on and see if that factors into this one at all. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. 
Here's Dylan Moore. Dylan Moore. Next offering is in for a strike. Kick and deals. And now the count is even. Really good slider. He's up there just hoping that it ends up off the plate away. Now fly ball to right center. It gets down a base hit. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. He obviously put a very nice swing on that pitch and really drove it towards the gap. But I'm pretty surprised he only ended up on first right there. And it's kind of hard to say if there was some hesitation or if they just decided to play it safe. Next to hit, Ty France. In the air, out towards left center. Brings it in. And that is that. Mariners leave a couple. They trail things here, 2-0. Back here at the ballpark, we head to the bottom of the second. Here's the catcher, Luis Campusano. In there at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Next pitch misses, and the count is even two and two. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. The line of the pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. Righty to the plate. And down on strikes he goes. That's one out in the bottom of the second. Cal Mitchell to the plate here. The wind of the pitch. And a big swing and a miss. And that one hit 97 on the gun. Batting it. Next for the Padres, Tucapita Marcano. Marcano. Marcano checks his swing. Appeal down to third. Didn't go. Next pitch is outside. There's a strike. Left-hand hitter waits. Got him swinging for the strikeout. The high heat too much on that one. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. New inning getting started. Now the third baseman, Josh Rojas. Musgrove was originally picked in the first round of 2011 by the Blue Jays, but now a San Diego kid who grew up in Grossmont and got a chance to pitch for his hometown team in the playoffs in 2022. Next one is off the plate three and one yeah it's really been fun watching him develop as a major league pitcher with the Astros as part of that 2017 World Series championship team it was kind of an afterthought He's but up. after being traded and bouncing around a little bit he really found himself now, and now, became a dominant pitcher Cade in the game Cade Marlowe Marlo. up next for the Mariners and he's already singled in this game Next offering is foul back. Ooh. 
Righty delivers. And now it's even <laughs> up. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Well, just a beautiful fastball on the inside corner for that backwards K right there. I think the hitter saw it all the way coming from that opposite arm angle. So I got to think he was looking away and just got locked up by the hard stuff boring in on his hands. And that one is lifted in the air. Tatis drifts towards it. Brings it in for the third out. Nobody left for Seattle. They're still down. It's two zip. As we go to the last of the third. So digging in now for San Diego, Jake Cronenworth. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. The two on. Slap the other way, foul. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it would surprise a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. And a payoff pitch. He goes down looking. Well, he froze him with a great fastball right on the corner. It's kind of like bowling him. You think the ball's going to get into the gutter and somehow just hangs onto that edge and knocks down a pin. Well, he got the outside corner of the plate and got that call third strike. So up next, Jose Azokar went down on strikes his first time through. Why to kick the pitch? Struck him out swinging. Some high cheese for strike three. Well, right now he's in cruise control, autopilot, just dominating these hitters. It doesn't look like it's a fun at bat. And all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy in the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. Line drive, Adam in center field. Nothing doing there for the Friars, but they hold the 2-0 lead. New pitcher on now, Michael King. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say, spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. So now it's the Mariner cleanup hitter, Cal Raleigh. 0 for 1 so far. Now a check swing, but he held up. Swing and a miss. That is strike two. Wow, that's 89 on the gun, and it's a changeup. It's like good hitting if you're looking for it, but because of the speed differential between the fastball and that pitch, really hard for a hitter to get on time with it. To first, and one gone to the fourth as they get the leadoff man. And now for Seattle, J.P. Crawford. He was plunked in his first trip to the plate. Right side. And that one handled. Two quick outs here in the top of the four. That's what a good sinker's designed to do. Now Get a guy to roll over a little bit, hit the ball on the ground, kill some worms while you're at it. Here's a speed threat. Luke Rayleigh. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. The wind and the pitch. That one ripped right center field. That's back. Out of here. A solo shot, and they slice into the lead. It's 
Really great job of anticipation there. He knows he throws the sinker. That one down in the zone. You're trying to beat it to the spot it's getting to. Well, he won. Jorge Polanco now at the plate. He was a strikeout victim his first time. Rip to short. Tosses across the first. And Polanco is out. And that's the third out. Seattle gets a little closer on this solo homer. And it's now a 2-1 ball game. New pitcher for the Mariners, George Kirby. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep them within striking distance. Manny Machado up to the plate. First time up was a pop out. Chris Machado was a guy who impacts the game with his bat. He's got big time power. But what about the defense? He hasn't only won a gold glove, multiple gold gloves, but he's also won a platinum glove as the best defender at any position in his league. Got him. One gone here. Fernando Tatis Jr. to hit here. He's already homered here in this one. You talk about the power and the speed together. Well, we knew he was going to be a stud just coming up, making his way through the minor leagues, and quickly at this level, an impact player. France steps on the bag. Already two gone here in the home no four. Number two, second baseman, Xander. Bogart. It's Xander Bogarts now. 0 for 1 as he popped out foul to third his first time up. That one ripped left field. That's back there. Gone! He made him pay for that one, and they had a run. It's 3-1. Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. Here's the catcher to hit, Luis Campusano. 0 for 1, he struck out swinging last time. And the righty deals. Out towards left center. Rodriguez settles under it. Makes the grab. And that is the third out of the inning. But the Padres add to the lead on a solo homer. And this is now a 3-1 ball game. We're back. And there's a new arm on the mound to start the fifth. Luis Patino. And this is an important part of this game. Tight score and still a lot of outs to get. So they're looking for a big outing out of him right here to get some critical outs. So digging in, Dylan Moore. One for one with a single so far. Dylan Moore. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Outside. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Matt Waldron getting ready to come in for Bob Melvin. And a 2-2. And a swing and a miss. One away here in the fifth. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Ty France up next for the Mariners. Glide out his first time. 
Fouls one off. Two and two. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Very strong coming out of the pen so far as he punches out the first two batters he's faced in this one. Getting straight to work. Man, it's talked about a lot, but relievers are just so electric these days. He's not fun at bats if you're a hitter. And I'm so glad I'm retired. The 1 1. And that's a strike. It's been tough for the offense so far, but you can't get frustrated. You got to find a way to shake it off. Go up there and relax. That's the only way you're going to be able to put runs up on the board. The other way makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. And one, two, three, go the Mariners. And it remains a 3 1 ball game. Emerson Hancock gets the ball now. They know that he can get a right-hander out, but he's in position to Ladies face a couple gentlemen. of lefties this You're inning. Right. Now, now pitching for the Mariners. Number 35. So here's the Padres DH. Cal Mitchell struck out swinging his first time. The designated hitter. Cal Mitchell. And a pitch. That one fouled off two and two. Gets a piece and stays alive. Here comes a pitch. Good job to fight that one off. And the pitch. Just yes. off the outside part of the plate. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And that one hit to first. He steps on the bag, and the leadoff hitter retired in the fifth. Good late bite on that slider. Got the hitter out in front, rolled over on it. Exactly what he was supposed to do. So up next, Tucapita Marcano. His first at bat was a strikeout. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Pitch misses, and yeah, that's ball two. Boog, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. On the run, throw to first. Oh man, for the fifth inning, moving along, two quick outs. Well, he had to make the perfect play up the middle, be able to square himself up with the shoulders enough to be able to make a strong, accurate throw to first, and I thought that was an infield hit all the way. Next is the speedy first baseman, Jake Cronenworth. He's 0 for 1. Good eye right there. Right-handed reliever. Swing and a line drive and a base hit up the middle. He was all over that one. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. So the batting order turns over. Jose Azokar, the next up for the Padres. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts? Oh. That misses, and it's 2 and 1. Cronenworth leads off first with two down to the inning. Soft contact in the air, and that's a base hit. They stop the lead runner at second, now two on with two outs. No batter, no batter, just seven. a flare down that right field line and he got it to drop in fair I guarantee you he was yelling get down get down as he ran out of the box because boo sometimes you just got to talk to it so two down Hassan Kim the next to hit single and scored back in the first he's one for two one for two
the pitch. Lifted in the air, right center field. Rayleigh on his way over. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And the inning is over. Padres leave a pair as the lead remains 3-1. So the Padres with a new arm in the mound, Matt Waldron. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Now the number two hitter, Cade Marlowe. The designated hitter, Cade Marlowe. The next offering misses. And the count is three and one. Activity in the bullpen. Angel De Los Santos getting ready to come in for Bob Melvin. Kolek getting loose as well. And the pitch. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Here's the center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. He is quite an athlete. I mean, you look around the other sports, basketball, football, you feel like he could thrive in one of those sports, too. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. That's a strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. Cal Raleigh up next for the Mariners. So now one and two. Kicks and fires. Double play ball to second. There's one. Double play. They can't seem to break through. Inning over. So they make short work of them there. Hard of the order, 3-4-5 coming up. It's the Padres 3 and the Mariners 1. Back down for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Austin Volk. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. Three, four, five, due up for the home team. Here's Manny Machado to start it off. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Center field. Rodriguez settles under it. Pulls it in for the out. Up next, the, the right field. And the batter will be Fernando Tatis Jr. And it was a homer back in the first inning that got his day started at the plate. Yeah, Boog, a two-run blast. His fans were just still getting into their seats here at the ballpark. So if you showed up late to this one, you missed out on a big moment early on. The 1-1. And another ball. Some activity in the Mariners' bullpen. Gabe Spire appears to be getting ready for manager Scott Service. Crable, the right-hander, also getting loose. The pitch. On the ground to the left, and it goes just foul. The pitch. Fouls that off to the left, and we'll do it again. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. He was a little up front, but did a good job keeping the hands back long enough to foul that pitch off. Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. 
Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. Next offering, pop foul off to the right out of play. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Some really good tunnel action there. That's no a picture-perfect no slider to get the strikeout. Starts over the middle of the plate and then dives hard off the outside corner. You know, he's probably thinking about the fastball they got the pitch before, and there's no way to hold up when you tunnel that well. Now a check swing at the 1-1. Look down to first, no swing. The 2-1. They say it went. <laughs> and down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Padres down in order. And the score stays three to one. So they turn things over to one of their young arms, Jay Groom. These are the spots where relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. The Mariners going with a pinch hitter, Mitch Garver. Next offering is in for a strike. One ball, two strikes. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter, so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. The Mariners going with a pinch hitter. Mitch Hanniger. One out, the base is empty for him. The pitch. That one misses. Two balls and a strike. And here it comes. And yeah, that's too high. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. On the ground, right side. Gets it to first, oh. and two away to start the seventh. Up next is Seattle, the second baseman, Jorge. And now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Jorge Polanco. Next pitch misses inside, and that's ball two. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Next one misses. Now three and one. Dylan Moore up next for the Mariners. The three one. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. And it hops over the wall for an automatic double. Well, there's something really nice about getting yourself an automatic double like that. You get to stroll into second base without having to worry about a throw or getting your uniform dirty. And now you're just looking for the next guy to kind of do the same thing. Maybe put one in the gap so you can jog home as well. New arm out of the bullpen, Robert Suarez. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise. Now the left fielder, Dylan Moore. Ball to strike. The pitch. Just oh, off the back. inside edge.
Polanco on its second with two down. And that is in for a strike. Two and two now. Runner leads away at second. Swing and a ball lifted left field. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. So a job well done from the Friar bullpen that time. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Padres three, and the Mariners one. Staying in the game on defense, Mitch Hanniger. He'll be the new right fielder after entering as a pinch hitter. They hand the ball over to a new arm, Gabe Spire. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. So coming into the game now on defense, Luis Urias. He's in at shortstop. Bottom of the seventh, and we got a pinch hitter to lead it off. Tyler Wade, and this is a big at bat in this ball game. The 2-1. That's ball three. Swings and misses and one down below the zone. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Leading off for the Padres. And now, Cal Mitchell. Cal Mitchell. The pitch. Oh, and he hit him. Well, that one might sting for a bit, but it helps the team and it boosts the OBP boom. Sometimes that trade off is worth it, but you know, sometimes it's not. And now the lefty just nope. missed. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. Runners on the move. Swing and a miss. Throw to third. Save. Double steal. I think he surprised everyone in the ballpark and especially the pitcher. Wasn't a great lead there, but when he took off, I think he caught him off guard. Nice job to get to third. Two runners in scoring position. Nobody out. Little trouble with this one behind the plate. Over to first. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. Now, Pat, first base. Jake Cronenworth, the next up for the Padres. Used the big part of the field last time. Nice liner to center. The lefty ready and a 1-1. One -one. Next offering is outside. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners that they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. Next pitch is outside. Three and one now. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. Sliced hard but foul. And here's a 3-2. Bounce back to the mound. Tosses to first. That takes care of Cronenworth. The center fielder, number 28. Now the pinch hitter coming on for the Padres. Jerickson Profar. Two runners in scoring position with two away for him. 
Two outs, two in scoring position. Next pitch inside, and a count two and one. At the belt and fires. On the ground to third. Dives and he can't hang on. Not in time. He's safe. So they're making a move for a bat off the bench. Matthew Batten. Two out opportunity for him with runners on the corners. Mitchell, the runner at third. Profar at first. Two out of the inning. Swing and a miss. And that is strike two. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. Kicks his swing, now an appeal to first. And he went around, says Ricky Holiday. Two men left stranded, but they do push across one. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Padres four and the Mariners one. So remaining in the game defensively, Jerickson Profar. He'll be out center now after pinch hitting. Also into the ball game, Matthew Batten. He's in at shortstop. Also entering the game, Kyle Higashioka. He takes over behind the plate. And stepping in for the Mariners, Ty France. The Mariners in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. Got him swinging. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Oh, you got to be pretty quick with the bat speed these days. So many guys throwing in the upper 90s, and you see the velocity on that one just tough to catch up to. I mean, guys are coming in, and they're going max effort. They're not looking to go a long distance. They want to get as many strikeouts as they possibly can. And there's a the ball. Got to keep things airtight defensively right here. On your toes, ready to make a play. If you can get this to the ninth with a three-run lead, it should be a W. The 2-1. That one catches the corner for a strike. Runs it up to 96 to record the punch out. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing and miss, and I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. That misses. And now three balls and a strike. That clips the inside corner for a strike. That was absolute gas. Triple digits on the gun. It's just a different experience as a hitter watching that go by. Got it by him for the K. Mariners go down quietly there, and they trail it 4-1. Joey Crable gets handed the rock out of the pen. Now pitching for the Mariners. Number 34, Joey Crable. Now into the game, Samad Taylor. He's the new third baseman. Number one. Now a pinch hitter coming on for the Padres. Eggy Rosario. Now at third base, number five. Eggie. 
struck him out looking. Fastball to letters, froze him for strike three. Now, now Bob Melvin going with a pinch hitter. Bryce Johnson looking to start something with one gone. Good eye right there. Kicks and deals. Fouls one off out of play back to our left. Fights it off, you'll see another. Righty to the plate. Line drive. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. Now that second base Xander. Now Bob Melvin going with a pinch hitter. Corey Howell looking for a two-out spark with the bases empty. Two outs. That's a little bit low. Righty delivers. Rip to short, snagged on a bounce. On to France. Padres go down one, two, three. Three up, three down for San Diego as they hold on to a 4 1 lead. You're Staying in the game on defense, Eggy Rosario. He'll play third after coming into the game as a pinch hitter. Also into the ball game, Bryce Johnson. He takes over and right. Also entering the game, Corey Howell. He'll play second. Out of the bullpen for the Padres, number 20. Save opportunity for him right here, and he's their guy. Time to lock this one down and get out of here with the W. Back now as it'll be a pinch hitter to lead off. Dominic Canzone. Dominic Canzone. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball left field. Marcano under this one. Puts it away for the out. Now that. The, the Mariners going Mariner. with a pinch hitter, Michael Chavis. One out, Michael the base is empty for him. Chavis. Ball to strike. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. The one two. Got him. Down to the last out for the Mariners. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Luis Arias. Came into the game on defense. So his first trip to the plate here. Down to their final strike. And that's outside. Swing and a pop-up. He's got it. Ball game. The Padres claim the win here behind some great pitching and defense. Winning never gets old, but it's also important to come out and play with some level of a fear of failure. That's what brings out the best, knowing that if I don't bring it today, we could lose. And nobody likes to lose, especially when you work this hard to play at this level. Nice win today. 4-1 the final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.
the final line score for the South.